I'm really excited today to share with you we're going to do an orientation for a GX32 magnitude. This is a 2021 model and uh, we're going to do a walk around the outside. We're going to look inside and see how things work. Going to look at the dash. So let's get to it. Wow, that's a beautiful motorhome. It really pops with that full body paint. Let's start with the driver's side. Behind the first door, you will find your own 6,000 watt diesel generator and DEF filling spout. DEF means diesel exhaust fluid. There's a gauge in the dash interface where you can check on how much DEF you have. It's important that you heed the low DEF warning light if it comes on. If you run out, you could find yourself stranded alongside the road somewhere. If you ever need to work on the generator or turn it off from outside, it has a breaker switch an on-off switch, and an hour meter. And the oil should be changed in your generator every 150 hours. Let's talk about the fuel tanks. There's two of them. The front tank holds 28 gallons and the back 40. So with 68 gallons, you have a range of over 500 miles. The generator runs off the front tank, so it uses the fuel out of the back tank first, then switches to the front, so you never run out of diesel when you're boondocking. The big rig pumps have larger nozzles and fill fast, so avoid them and fill up at the car pumps. You can use the big rig pumps, but you may end up having to operate the trigger by hand because they're so big around. Your magnitude has a Girard on-demand tankless hot water heater. Besides always having hot water, one of the helpful features of this hot water heater is the temperature sensor. If you have it on and there's water running, it will automatically come on when the temperature drops below 38 Fahrenheit. I recommend using disposable gloves when dumping your tanks. The connection coming from the tank swivels so you can dump at any angle. And this little screw thing at the bottom can be taken out so you can dump straight down into a connection. You have two tanks. One is for the gray water which comes from everything but the toilet and the black water which comes from the toilet. Empty the black water first so the gray water will clean out some of the residue poo that may be caught up or hung up in the hose. This sprayer is the lowest water connection in the system, so you can drain all of the water from here. It's pretty slow, but it works. The tank cleanout has spray nozzles in it. That knocks anything loose that might be in there. It helps to clean it out once in a while. Connect the water hose here for hooking up the water source like a, at an RV park. Sometimes when hooking up to an unknown water source, the pressure can be way too high, so I recommend that you use a pressure reducer on your water hose. The storage compartments are constructed from one-piece rotocast lining. It's really tough stuff. They have drains in the bottom so they can be washed out, and you don't have to worry about forgetting to shut the lights off because they're on timers. The 50 amp electrical hookup is a twist lock connector. Just push it in and give it a twist. And I recommend taking the time to use the screw ring to connect it just in case someone trips on it. It's a good idea that you shut the furnace off when you're filling your diesel tanks. You may also consider putting a screen over the exhaust here to keep the bugs out. Now let's take a look at the passenger side. The XG has an amazing amount of storage, and you'll find the pass-through openings convenience for storing longer things like tables or skis. The inverter is found inside the front storage compartment on the left side. The inverter is what switches the AC and DC power back and forth. The jack hydraulics compartment allows you to easily access and change your fluids, and if some reason you need to release the pressure on your jacks, you can do it from here. This is where you fill your water tank that's inside the coach. It has an overflow port up here on the top, so when it's full of water, the water will come out there, not on the coach or in the coach. The propane tank is big enough so you can be confident to be out for extended periods of time without running out of propane. You can monitor the tank from the main panel in the coach or from your phone. The propane connection is really fun when you hook up a grill. The TV has a really good sound system and pulls out and swivels. 
The door acts as a shade and it's surprising how much help it is in cutting down the glare and reflections. The awning has a wind sensor, so it will automatically retract if the wind gets blowing too hard. This allows you to leave the coach without having to worry about it blowing off. The blue LED lights are mounted in the arms so you have lights when it's open or closed. Very nice. At the back of the coach, you'll see your 10,000 pound receiver for towing and your trailer connection plugs. There's two kinds there. I always use a step stool or a small ladder to access the ladder that goes up the back of the coach. I always keep one with me when I travel. It's okay to walk on the roof. I like to check it once in a while just to make sure that I don't have any debris up there or there's no damage. Inside the cockpit. You're going to like this comfy seat. It has a lot of adjustments to fit whatever mood your body might be in. The pedals are adjustable so you can have good control no matter how tall or short you are. There's lots of storage in the doors and a nice roomy glove box. This light is small, but you're going to find the step light to be super helpful when you're getting in and out at night. You have an ignition key, but you have two other keys. The purple one is for the two locks in the door, and the gray one is for the outside compartments. Now let's take a look inside the coach. There's a switch inside this door that determines whether or not this step's going to stay out when you open the door or when you close the door or go in. So right now it's in the down position. I'm going to switch it to the up position and the step will stay. The coach batteries are stored underneath the step. Easy to access. Let's talk about the lights and controls. Inside the door on the left side you have the step switch, the coach power switch, and the solar interface. You'll find the light switches beside the door, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, and in the bathroom. Okay, I'll go through the main menu here. You have home, so master lights on and off and the shade open and close have your temperature here and then it shows your fresh gray black and lp you can turn your water pump on and off here and then you can start the generator you just have to hold this button down see it went off so you have to hold it down until the generator starts this is the ags automatic generator start and right now it's disabled next is the generator so here's the AGS again so if you want to start that you would just hold that down and it's going to give you a warning here and you can enable it or cancel it if you want it to run you have to enable it good safety feature so you can have this thing start with low voltage or HVAC load this is how many hours it has on it the reason they have that is because if you get 150 hours on it after the oil's changed, you need to change it again. And a lot of the parks have quiet times, so you can program that here so the generator won't run during those times. And then you have all of these options as far as uh, voltage and stuff when you want to do it, how many times to start or tries to start here, uh, minimum run time. Um, so you might want to run it 300 minutes and then it'll shut off and uh, time to stop volts 20 minutes it's good so this stuff is really helpful uh, so you can interact with your generator and one thing you need to know is that you can run a generator while you're going down the road next on the list is lights pretty self-explanatory if they're lit up they're on so let's see we're right here in the hallway so we can turn that off turn that back on again on and off for all of them then here is your temperature control for your furnace and air conditioner if you want to run your furnace all you have to do is turn that on and then your temperature is here so you only have one furnace there you might be able to hear it, it turned on so i'm going to turn this off it's the same thing with the uh, cooling you have a front air conditioner and a rear 
air conditioner and you run it auto or run the fans and when you have your furnace on you can actually run the the cooling fans also uh, which is really helpful to circulate the air so it, you don't get any condensation next on the list is the fan this is right above us in the kitchen so if you uh, want to vent out of the kitchen when it's raining it has a cover on it so you can do that and you can uh, use the motor on it to lift the vent and the motor to run the fan that's really nice if you have a stinky lunch or something and you you want to vent that out and you can run it going down the road so you don't have to wait until it's it's all vented to move your coach this one is for the awning the bed slide and the main slide you can see they're color coded here in order for this to work you have to have the engine running and the emergency brake on and you have to have the jacks down so we need to put those jacks down first so to run the jacks you have a power button here you just turn it on and then you hit this button here and they all go down you'll hear it go I recommend listening to that also because uh, if they need to be lubed they're going to tell you You can manually run these by picking manual and then hitting each one. Uh, I don't know that you'd ever have to do that, but you can. To raise the jacks, you just put the power on and then hit this bottom button, which says retract. So it gets a little dark in here sometimes, so I just memorize these. There are just three buttons I use. Power, and then put the jacks down. Power, put the jacks up. Now that that's down, we can go ahead and put the slides. It's a good idea when you bring the slides back in that you hold that uh, retract button down a little bit longer than you think you would because it lets the motors readjust and align um, the slide, especially on the bigger ones. I want to remind you that you can link your cell phone to this and run everything from your cell phone. And again, when you bring that in, leave that button down a little bit and let those motors adjust. This just tells you that your uh, inverter is working, so you're getting a voltage that's being converted from battery to power to run your uh, lights and, and refrigerator, that kind of thing. And you can run your refrigerator plugged into just 110, but not the air conditioners. That has to be have the 50 amp service. So this is a queen size bed. Just pull this down and the ladder's like that. Nice accent lights. Remember this goes up and down so you can see the stars. And the button for that is on your phone. It's on the main panel by the main door. The table's really easy to uh, bring down. There's just a little lever under there. So you just reach under here for the lever, flip it like that, and you can push this down. Of course, if you were making the bed, you would move the seats first. That's good and solid. You can store things under this seat, but there's a couple of screws that you'd have to take out. Same way over here you have to reach down into the side here and pull this to get these to recline. This is just a splitter up here and it's velcroed down. Two air conditioners. USB and a USB here. A couple of speakers under here and push lights. Emergency exit. Your furnace is underneath here. So here in the bedroom you have a furnace duct. There's another one here in the hallway. One in the bathroom. And I'd suggest getting the louver duct for this. 
gets a little warm in that bathroom sometimes. And another duct here for the living room. Let's talk about the bathroom. This is the controls for the temperature for the on-demand hot water heater. You have some GFI outlets here. Your water filter is under here, right there. I might mention too that this screw will come out and you can slide this up and there's, the only reason that's there is there's some bolts uh, holding a bracket that holds this cabinet. So you can actually put stuff back there if you don't want anybody to access it, kind of a hidden cubby hole, it's kind of nice. As you can see, you have control of the bathroom light, the water pump, the hall light, and um, the fan. This is an upgraded toilet. It's not plastic, it's porcelain. And it's really nice. It has these swirls here. It helps wash it out every time. One of the problems RVs have notoriously had is plugging the bathroom, the toilet. So this has solved that problem. Is when you look down in there and you push the pedal down, you just have to push it once, you don't have to hold it. It's going to run water down in there. It's kind of a double valve system. So you make sure you get everything down the hole. You still don't want to put anything in there that would plug it though. The shower is pretty self-explanatory. It probably goes without saying, but you want to make sure these doors are locked tight when you go down the road. The only thing you have to remember about this privacy door for your bedroom, just make sure it's locked in place before you go down the road. Your magnitude comes with a regular residential refrigerator. Make sure you keep this shut when you're going down the road. I just shut it all the time, just make it a habit and it has lots of shelves, adjustable shelves, just like any other refrigerator. One of the nice things is it has an ice maker. So this has to be under here and pushed up in there. Then you push this down to make it work. Of course, you have to have the water on too to make that work. Always shut this, just a good habit. Pop up power, there's a switch right under here that turns the lights on under the counter. So when you open these down here, you can see. It's really nice to have a stove that has uh, two power sources. So if you're stopped and you don't want to run the generator or you're not plugged in, you can run the propane. And notice it has two sizes of burners, so two different kinds of heats. And to turn it on, you just hold that down. You can hear that. And just snap that baby on don't have the propane on and the induction uh, is all push button here for powering it up it has the convection microwave oven the buttons are pretty self-explanatory to notice the light didn't come on we're not plugged in and the generator is not running so this won't work unless we turn the generator on don't be afraid to run your generator. It doesn't take a lot of diesel to do that, and it's really convenient, easy to start, easy to stop. Behind the refrigerator, you have a full pantry. Keep your trash down here. This is nice. Pops out and put soap or scrubbing brush or whatever in there. These are full extension slides. But this is just an access door. Uh, you can't get into it from the front. You have to go around, take these drawers out and get around. But that helps you if you ever have to work on any of the plumbing or anything. Having a double sink is really nice. You can use these backsides as cutting boards if you want. It swivels, comes out, and then you have two settings on this button. While we're in the kitchen, let's talk about the screens. They have a little latch here to take them apart and they'll slide out. They're kind of finny, finicky, but you'll figure it out. And the only reason you ever want to do that is to clean them. And then this, you turn clockwise to make them go out. Just make sure those are in before you go down the road. Underneath the bed, you can access your water tank. 
and uh, you'll see that if you look straight down here there's a valve on your plastic pipe that way you can drain this this tank right out of there it goes just goes over and straight down and then there's a hose here if you ever want to winterize it yourself this hose right here you take this out and, and you can funnel in uh, RV antifreeze uh, personally I think it's better to not do that I don't trust that stuff for my own health but uh, you can what I recommend is just blow out all the lines and then put some antifreeze in the traps or take it into the dealer and have them do it for you. This has all the safety detectors in it. There's one up here then there's one here under the table. So that switch turns all the electricity on and off on your coach and if you're going to store it for any length of time just go ahead and shut that off so it's not draining the batteries your solar will charge those batteries but it won't overcharge them this is the deadbolt and then down here that just is the door lock what we normally do is when we get out of the coach and flip that down this slide shut to keep the bugs out if you have the screen door open You'll find this curtain in the pantry behind the refrigerator. But this is uh, really easy to use. I usually just keep it up here in the front when we're traveling. But you can see it has a Velcro on the edge here. So it has a seam in the middle. So just find that seam, stick it in the middle. So that just gives you some privacy at night and if uh, whoever's sleeping up there wants some privacy you have this curtain this is a really good place to keep the remotes if you have to pick the source it's right here between mute and menu okay we've got it on menu what I'm going to do is use this arrow to move over to channel. Then I'm going to use the bottom arrow to move down to auto scan. Start to scan, push the button in the middle. So you can see it just automatically went to a channel. And just like any other TV, you can just change the channels. And it's from those ones that it automatically uh, searched and found. There's a lot. It's got good reception with that wine guard on top. And if you don't remember what that wine guard is, it's that black dome up on top and that acts as your antenna and you can get a service to hook up to Wi-Fi full time or you can just use a hotspot out of your phone. So I want to remind you that when you shut the vehicle off, you're going to have two choices here, all sensors and perimeter sensors. So right here on the steering wheel, you go down and you scroll down to that one, push the middle button and you're golden. You won't have any sensors, any alarms going off. The compression brake is a great tool for slowing you down, going down steep hills like on a pass. The dash will have a small orange indicator light when it's working. You have anti-skid, you can leave that on or off depending on the weather, emergency flashers. The lane watch beeps at you when you get too close to the line. I usually leave that off myself unless I'm in heavy traffic, but that's a completely personal choice. You'll have to play with these switches for this control here, but they're all touch tone. Go to home and uh, apps at uh, Sirius XM, but you can get your fuel prices, traffic information. Well, you can read it. It's pretty self-explanatory kind of stuff that you'd find on your cell phone. Go to your phone and you can hook up CarPlay down here at the bottom. You have a USB and then you have a place to plug in 12 volt here, another one up here, then you have 110 also right here. Your heater, this is your fan control. These are so pretty self-explanatory. AC is right here, temperature. This is your brake control right here. So this would be the manual, squeeze that, it's manual. And this gives you plus 
plus or minus uh, juice back to the trailer brake. The nice thing about this is that you can program the dash. You'll have to work with that a little bit. But say that you're hauling a trailer with nothing on it, going to need a different amount of juice to the brake than one with uh, a car on it. So you can pre-program those or save what you set so you don't have to change those buttons every time. All you have to do is go up there and pick the one you want. Now that the general orientation is over, we want to take the slides in and lift the jacks. So remember, before I take the slides in, I have to make sure the vehicle's running and the emergency brakes on. Then I can move the slides in. Then I can lift the jacks. All right, let's do that. Turn the power on and retract. There's a couple of maintenance things I wanted to mention to you. This is chain wax. Uh, I just buy it like at Walmart. Anyway, there's a couple of things that you have to keep up on. You want to make sure that you keep your jack uh, rams clean and this stuff works really good for lubing those that's why when you go up and down listen to it and uh, if it starts to drag a little bit or whatever but keep them clean this really helps the other thing is the steps these things can get draggy in these joints and you hear it or you'll see it, it won't want to go up all the way or something anyway just clean these out these little joints then take some of this chain wax the same thing and spray it in here there's a couple more up and inside. It just takes a minute and uh, you should be golden. Wow, what a machine. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me today. I certainly enjoyed showing this to you. I hope it was helpful. So until next time, do what's right and be a happy camper.